Hey everyone, my name is John Williams with Kimberly Nurseries, and today we're going to talk about iron chlorosis. Iron chlorosis is one of the most common plant problems that we have in our area. It is uh, identified by the yellowing of the leaves uh, of your trees and shrubs. Uh, most commonly, uh, the yellowing of the space between the veins of the leaf, with the vein of the leaf remaining green, and, uh, and then the inner part uh, turning a lime green or a yellow. Uh, and in some severe cases, the, uh, the leaves will turn all yellow or even white or can also exhibit some leaf scorch, which is the browning or dieback of the leaves. The cause of iron chlorosis is primarily caused to poor soil conditions, and in our area, it's mostly due to the high alkalinity of our soils. Even though there may be enough iron in the soil, uh, the high pH can reduce the availability of that iron for the plants to be able to absorb. Because iron chlorosis is related to the alkalinity of our soil, uh, we can tackle the, the direct problem from both ends. Uh, the first is to tackle the alkalinity of the soil issue. Um, it is possible to lower the pH of our soil. It does take time and commitment and dedication to make it happen, um, but uh, it is something that can improve the overall soil around your plants. The soil pH uh, can be lowered by applying elemental sulfur. We typically recommend doing an application of elemental sulfur twice a year, typically in the spring and one in the fall and uh, it will take several years for that to make much of an impact, uh, but over time, that sulfur will help to lower the pH of the soil around your plants. In addition to lowering the pH of the soil, we can also increase the concentration of iron in the root zone of the plants. This is typically done with a root drench where we take powdered chelated iron uh, and mix it up in a bucket of water and then drench the, uh, the root zone of the plant. It's important to note that not all iron is created equal. You can't just take a bucket uh, of uh, old iron nails uh, and, and mix it in the dirt around your plant and expect the plant to improve. The iron has to be in a form that the plants can absorb. Uh, and uh, that form is typically chelated iron, but not all chelated irons are the same. Uh, there are some formulations of chelated iron that are completely ineffective in, uh, uh, in soils with high pH conditions. Uh, so you wanna make sure you get chelated iron that is formulated from the EDDHA molecule. Um, it should say EDDHA on the packaging. Those are specifically formulated for conditions of high pH soil and, uh, and the plants can then absorb that, uh, that iron in. To apply the iron chelate, we typically recommend taking a tablespoon of the iron chelate powder and applying it to one gallon of water. Uh, it's easiest to do this in a five gallon bucket where you can put five tablespoons of iron chelate uh, and then mix it with the five gallons of water. Uh, and then that is, is uh, poured in the root zone of the plant. This can be done as often as once a week if needed. Um, it's typically best to do it uh, at least a couple times a month, even once a month if the conditions aren't so bad. Um, in really severe cases, you'll wanna do it more often. In less severe cases, you can do it less frequently. So it's important to remember that iron and sulfur are both elements. Uh, they're not considered a fertilizer, so it is possible to maintain an organic garden while still applying elemental sulfur and iron to your garden. So if you're looking for iron or sulfur for your garden, please give us a call or come by our facility and we'd love to be able to help you out.